notice this because uh, it really is what it is. And it might surprise you, but when people ask me what's your main influence or what is your favorite artist, that, that kind of question, I surprise them with a cliche because for me it's Stevie Wonder. You know, that's one of my main influences. And you might not hear that initially when you listen to the music, but for me it's all connected in a way. So I'm very fond of certain types of Brazilian music, certain types of Caribbean music, but not all, certain types of music from different countries uh, in Africa. Um, I'm a big lover of funk music, disco, that's a big influence on me. You know, like with everything, every genre and every country has good stuff and horrible stuff. I have no borders. I'm also looking back a lot. So I take a lot of my inspiration from 1960s up until the 1990s and for me that has to do mostly with the sound you know because to me music is, is sound and emotion that's what it is the, the machines you use to make sounds synthesizers uh, drum machines guitars whatever i feel that we've lost some of the good stuff in modern day music you cannot find that down anywhere else it's not there Nobody convinced me, you cannot do it with a computer. When I make a song, that's how it starts for me. Because if you just start with the drums, for instance, it can be like boom, duck, boom, duck, that's it. But you can play that in a gazillion type of ways, with a trillion type of sounds. So it's not just the notes, you know, and the rhythms that you play, but it's with what sound you do. So, because the sound evokes emotion. It's actually it's something that Quincy Jones also said, I just let it flow. I don't mean to get a little spiritual here and everything, but it feels like you're not even doing it yourself. Some of them are friends. One of them is Ronald Snyders, which is a, a Surinamese uh, flute player, age 68, living in the Netherlands, who is still in top shape. We became friends over the years. I just approached him one time at a show and told him I was a big fan of his music. We stayed in touch and now I think we are on the phone twice a day or something. And the same with uh, Ed Mota. It's a guy that I ran into at a show he did in Amsterdam. He really hit it off and I asked him to sing on a song and he was like, I don't know because there are so many people that ask and I don't want to sing over some kind of lame-ass house beat and have you abused my name for a little fame or something. And I was like, no, I, I'm not asking you just because I want your name. I want you. I want your special skill on this thing. I played in the song and he was like, oh, so that's what you mean. So either they're friends of mine or they are people that I wait until I find the right song. Another guest that's on the record is very important to me, this Meritu, that is a Cape Verdean singer who's living in Rotterdam. I lived there for around 20 years, and this guy lived, I think, 100 meters away from my home, and I never saw him, I never met him. And this guy is like a music encyclopedia uh, when it comes to Cape Verdean music. Actually helps spread a lot of Portuguese, Brazilian, Cape Verdean, and, and other uh, styles of music in the Netherlands, which is fascinating to me. So I'm also trying to use this group that I'm building around me as a platform for other artists to take off, you know, sort of like a collective. It's not just a musical trick that we do. We don't just put some people together on stage. It's actually a new family for me. Yes, they do. That is sometimes a difficult process for me because I am a little bit of a control freak, so you have to let go of some ideas, you know? When I started this group, I had to make a choice. Am I gonna put most of my music on a backing track and just play over this with some musicians? Or we're we gonna play everything 100% live? And that's what I went for. So it meant that I had to, you know, let go of some of the layers that are on the record. Before this group, I was not a really active live performer at all. People had to convince me to do, do this. And I was actually kind of scared to do it. And then somebody once said to me that insecurity on stage and those kind of things, that they come from fear. 
not having enough control over the situation. You know, if you look at the band, it's, it all seems pretty logical and natural, but there goes a lot of thought into that thing, you know, because you're trying to get seven people on stage in sync with each other. Yeah, that's, that's the magic. <laughs> this is such a nice question. Okay. Now you're really going into my mind and if you really want to know, you should actually check inside my studio because that's already a little bit of this world. You would go back in time without going back in time. So we are in the now. Visually things are different. So stuff like the furniture is different. Pretty much all the kind of stuff around you is different. But we can still have our iPhones. That's, that's okay. It's also a world where we uh, have finally come to realize that it's about unity. I don't want to sound like the biggest hippie you ever talked to, but it's what I really believe in. So in this world, there is no issue anymore about these topics. We have come to terms with ourselves and we've realized that we're all of the same value and we all have the same rights and obligations. And there's a lot of love and there's a lot of fun. And... I think climate-wise would be more more Portugal than the Netherlands, definitely. Mm -hmm. But I have to have to experience that for myself. I would go with uh, a seed, a star. A seed, a star is a song by Stevie Wonder from his album uh, "A Journey Through the Secret Life of Plants." It's a song that I don't think a lot of people notice because it was one of his most unsuccessful albums that he ever released. There was literally no hit song on the entire album. This song is serious dance floor material, but it's so intelligent and it's so complex and actually trying to get this song into our sets. <laughs> 